Hey there, and welcome to another episode of Foot Traffic. I'm super excited today because this is our first on-air coaching call where it's not one of my clients. This is somebody who actually was in our Facebook group who is always active and she won from the prize wheel an on-air coaching call. So I'm so excited to dive in and chat today with Jennifer. Before we do, Jennifer, do you want to jump on and just quickly tell, tell us a little bit about your business, um, you know, what it looks like, and then I'll jump in and start asking you some questions, or I guess you'll start asking me some questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Stacey. This is yeah. really such an honor. I'm just so excited. So um, I opened up a salon back in 2016 in Naperville. We have over 200 salons. And then recently in September of 2019, I opened up a bigger salon and started hiring people. So I'm definitely experiencing some growing pains yeah. and that's why I've been following you and I love everything that you're putting out there. So thank um, you. It's so exciting to be here. Yeah. So I'm excited to have you. So basically I'm an open book. Anything you want to ask me, please feel free. Um, I would love to start with, if you have a, qu if a question that pops up right away that you want to make sure to get to. Um, and then even if there's something where you're like, oh, I'm not really sure. A lot of times I always say to people, what are you struggling with right now? Like, what are those growing pains? How can I help? Um, trust me, I've had growing pains throughout the last two decades. So um, shoot, you're up. Okay, perfect. Um, so as you know, I just started um, a larger business. So yeah. the growing pains definitely for sure is how to gain more foot traffic into okay. our salon and gain more traction. Um, I guess I would start with maybe that would be my first question. Okay. Is, because it's new, you're saying this location. This location is new. We are really closely located to um, downtown Naperville. There okay. is about 160,000 people in Naperville. Okay. Um, and like I said, there's over 200 salons as well. So there is quite a few other businesses out there. So yeah. Like why like, you? Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay yeah. cool. And this is how many loca Is this the only location you have or you have something else you said? I, this is our only location. I okay. opened back in, um, 2016 in a salon suite and then, Got it. and then branched out. Yes. Okay, perfect. So you're brand new. You have lots of competition. You're in a busy area. Um, I'm familiar with Naperville we're neighbors, right? You're in Illinois, so you're not too far yeah. from me. Um, so, okay. So what I would say first is, yes, you could go the paid traffic route and already try to get in front of them there. However, with as many salons, as you said, there might already be a lot of saturation in paid market as well. So let me ask you, have you started to try to build any relationships with any complementary businesses? Yes, absolutely. That's definitely something that I am very proud about that we really try to get ourselves involved with the Naperville Chamber. Okay. So we've been a member of the Chamber since 2016. Um, I am such a creative, so I love doing photo shoots and fashion shows. Okay. And a large portion of our business is doing weddings. Okay. And so a part of our business is we are partnered up with photographers, okay. uh, bridal, uh, dress companies, um, and then just other local business as well. Any type of like fashion boutique, we try Got to- it. So um, if you're partner with them, what does that mean? What does the relationship look like? So a relationship would look like, so like our bridal boutique that yep. sells dresses, when a bride purchases a dress, they give them a swag bag. And in that swag bag is a gift certificate for our company, Refined Beauty. Perfect. And in hopes that when they receive that, that they'll come back in the door with that. So that's most our recent new okay. um, promotion that we're doing. Are you the only hair salon in that swag bag? There is, I believe, maybe one other. Okay. Do you know what their says? Like what theirs looks like? I don't. Are I you don't. able to find out? I, yeah, I'm sure. Okay. I, I definitely want you to because- you're not like, it's not a no brainer if there's two of you. And if one looks and feels right, if they're looking at it going like, Oh, this is the place I want to go. They're not yeah. going to look twice at yours. So we really want to make sure yeah. that we feel yours is above and beyond. And how can you get creative? Like what can you do to make yours really stand out and almost be educational in that piece, right? Like showing or, or what is everybody showing right now that's very typical and standard, especially for wedding updos or what they're doing now in the trends? But how do we make yours truly stand out? Or what kind of offer do we make, like that no-brainer offer to get them in your door too? Yes. 
Okay. I'm loving this. Okay. So you're, you're understanding the value of those relationships. Um, I would want you to even question like, how can you take it a step further? How can you like, do they ever put on events or anything at any of these expos or could you put on an event for brides and invite a few people in? Like if, if I'm a, let's say I'm, I'm you, could I invite the bridal shop somewhere? Maybe in your salon, maybe you do like a little, um, a little night out for the brides, right? And it's in your salon, you have champagne, you're not selling it, you're just, you know, giving it away, right? Um, and you invite like a photographer and a videographer and you do this like little special event for the bride to really start to build a, a bigger relationship with some of these businesses. What do you think about that? I definitely love that idea, especially now that we are in a space where we can host some events. Yeah. We have hosted an event with a local photographer that specializes in senior pictures. Okay. And so that has really been successful as far as getting more foot traffic with the younger audience. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that's been um, really exciting. But as far as like the brides, yeah, how do we get more potential brides or even existing brides to come in? Um, you know, because now that we offer other services because of our space and our staff, we yeah. can really, you know, expand the amount of um, possible generating income from yeah. that one client. Absolutely. Uh, uh, couldn't do that before. Yeah, I love this. And now, do you have any sort of referral program in place with your current clients? We do. Right now we have where if a client refers a new guest, the new guest yeah. receives $15 and then the existing guest receives $25 of product credit. Okay, cool. And then, and do you feel like people are, if that's like good enough for them, like, do you feel like people are actively trying to refer because they're like, Ooh, I want to rack this up or is it a nice thank you? I mean, I think it would be great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I mean, we are, I mean, honestly, we're mostly word of mouth referral based business. And yeah. I think that in my community that most of the, the women and men, they don't really necessarily care about whether there's an incentive there or not. You know, if they like us, they're just more um, open to be telling their friends and family. Um, I agree with that. But I do think not every person, but some people will see the value in, ooh, I want to save or I want to use this off. And even just saying like a product credit, that's only incentivizing people that like product. Not everybody that comes to the salon wants to tack that on. So you might want to think about another way that it would, it would really benefit them. When we introduced our referral program into our studio, we had one person like who had been with us for a little while who had naturally been referring, but nothing crazy. All of a sudden she had eight people that she referred in three months. So if it's the right incentive and it actually gets them to take action, it can really, really work on certain people. Not everybody went out and got eight referrals because some people don't care, right? They're like, whatever. If it comes up, I'll do it. Some people are motivated by money or motivated by that credit or whatever you're giving them. Yeah. So might, maybe experiment with that a little bit, like mix up the referral or like have something for like the month of March, you know, like our March referral is this and just see if like one month is better than the other. Um, anything like that. Okay. We, we did double referral month back in January and our referrals doubled. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So we're like the, the incentive, the incentive matters. It really does. Um, we track our referrals every month and we have a standing referral policy that you could get 365 days a year. So for January to double, some of those people were like, Whoa, let's do this. Like we're going to get double the amount. So we didn't double the amount for the guest. We just doubled the amount for the person that referred, right? Cause they're the ones that are doing the work and it worked. So we're, we're going to bring back double refer a month more than once a year for sure. Okay. Um, okay. So you said you have some growing pains. What, what are some of those growing pains? Uh, where do I begin? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, definitely right now I am wearing all the hats. I feel like, yeah. so I have been starting to delegate more, which has been super helpful. Okay. Um, you know, as far as like getting more foot traffic into our salon, I mean, I need to help my staff build their book of business. I have yeah. a, book, a business already. Um, but, but now I, it's building it, theirs. Yes. So, um, you know, sometimes I feel like we're not even visible on Google and yeah. like, how are people finding us? And that's why I said word of mouth is definitely our, yeah. our main form of generating business, but yeah. how do we 
how do we reach new guests and get them also in the door? Um, So, and if word of mouth already is your number one, focusing more on what's already working is going to help you than trying something new where you're gambling. You're not totally positive. The return's going to be there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, maybe like mixing it up, see if you can do something fun. Um, see if there can be a special or something that you could do with a referral just to make it a little different to see if it moves the needle at all. If you get more this month than last month. Now here's where you have to be careful, especially when you have a new business. You're so busy, you're not tracking. You're just like bringing it in. Like it just keep coming. You know, you're just taking all the money because you have to kind of keep your head down and keep making sure this keeps going. Yeah. But when you're tracking, And when you see like, well, last month there were six referrals and this month there were 12, you can tell if it worked or if you do something different and you lose the referral or you're both the same, then that didn't really move the needle. So the problem is in the beginning stages and really all of the stages, we're always just throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. But in the beginning stages of your business, you're most likely not able to track and even measure what is working. And that's when you really need to be tracking. Yeah, definitely. Um, I've been testing other things out too, like email marketing and creating funnels and just, you know, I know that there's definitely leaks and just trying to figure out what is going to generate the most revenue. Where do I put my money in? Where do I put my time in? Do you have a funnel already working right now? Working? (laughs) (laughs) I have one built. (laughs) Yes, I, I do. And I, it's probably, it's not the best. Okay. Um, what is it? What's the offer? Like what's the freebie? It's not. That's, okay. that's, but I wanted to know how many people are going to the website to look yeah. at our pricing for bridal and then yeah. how many people are just leaving. And so I decided, okay, well, if I can at least collect their name and email, yeah. then, which I know is probably not the wisest idea because you want to have the prices present. I really was just curious. So yeah. I launched this maybe three weeks ago. And so far we have a total of um, 66 people have opted in. So all brides. Just to see your bridal pricing. Just to see bridal pricing. Oh. Okay. And so from there though, I built out a funnel that basically is like, hi, nice to meet you. This is, this is us. And this is what we could do for you. And then yeah. from there, it kind of like flows into like a bridal checklist. And then I'm also going through the, this, everyone who's opting in and saying, you know, personally writing an email. So it's me just yeah. like typing everybody's name out, you know, doing yep. all the things and just saying, is there any questions you have? How can I help you? My okay. thoughts are, they may not hire us for their wedding day. It might not be in everybody's budget, but how do we get them to come into the salon to get other services, spray tans, um, hair extensions, lash, lash extensions. Yeah. We can service these people, not just for the wedding, yeah. but throughout their engagement and, and then beyond. Um, but I know that it's, it's not a hundred percent. That's right. Well, I'm glad you have something though. And you're collecting names and emails. I mean, that's a great start and 66 new leads is great. What I think you should try is even having like, if that opt-in would say like our top 10 or top five bridal hairstyles trending in 2020. Yes. Okay. We They're going to opt in. Yeah. Okay. And what happened? It wasn't as good. They're getting the price? That blows my mind. <laughs> uh, here's, and let me tell you, one of my rules is put your price on your website. Yeah. I think you're missing, like 66 people is great, but how, what was your conversion rate on your opt-in? Can you tell? Um, so 66 people opted in, 72% opened. But um, like how many out of the 66 that, that opted in, there's usually a, a very large percentage that said, no, thank you. Oh yeah. So since, since three weeks ago of, of creating this and 66 people have opted in, five have um, converted into clients. Um, no, what I'm asking is there's a percentage of people that will see the pricing and the name and email and they'll go, yes, I want it, which is 66 people. But how many people said no, thank you. And didn't give you your name and email. You should be able to see the conversion on that. Um, not see it. No, because it's basically okay. like you, if you opt in, then I will send you an email. So, so what software are you using? Flowdesk. Okay. So what I want you to check 
And if you can't, if this is not possible with that software, it's, a, it's not a software you should be using. You should know what percentage of people opted in and what did not take you up on it. So the 66 number does not make any difference to me. I want to hear you say 45% opted in, which resulted in 66 leads. If you tell me that you had 66 leads and 70% of them opted in, I'm like, amazing, Jennifer, you're killing it. Now let's go back. If you said I had 66 leads and then you tell me 10% opted in, I'm like, Jennifer, this, you should just turn this funnel off. So yeah. that's why you, you've got to focus on the right numbers. And then to say that the other one wasn't working as well. Do you really know if it wasn't working as well if you don't even know the percentage? Because if you're just looking at, oh, there was 44 and this one's 66, 66 is the winner, not necessarily. Because yeah. if yeah. the 44 was at converting at a higher percentage, we can just throw Facebook ad money on that and blow that funnel up. Yeah. So I would yeah. love for you to check on that. I am not familiar with Flowdesk. Message their support, see if it, they can tell you. And if they can, great, go look at those numbers and then really process which one was the better converting one. Make sense? Yes. Okay, cool. Oh. I'm sorry. That's okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I lost your, your uh, right, video. Oh, that's okay. As long as you can hear me, we're okay. Okay. So, okay. So that's the biggest thing is I want you to start looking at percentages more than you look at um, just a number, right? So even when I'm looking at 12 clients or 10 new leads, I'm really looking at, but what is the percentage of that? So when you started switching like, oh, my open rate was this or that's great. I want you to be able to hear those numbers. Um, okay. So amazing. And I also want you split testing. I want you trying these funnels and different funnels to see which one is going to work better. Um, and then I love that you have the upsells that you can say to them, eyelashes and other extensions and things like that too. Mm -hmm. um, any follow-up questions on that? Um, so you're thinking that I should test out, um, a funnel where I'm automatically giving them something as opposed to just doing the price list. Well, I, what I would really like to know, and obviously we can't go back and do this, but mm -hmm. I would love for you to really know that opt-in rate because if that opt-in rate is at, if it's not at 40% or higher, this funnel is not working as well as you're thinking it is. And mm -hmm. think about it. Let's say if 40% is the number you're shooting for, 60% of people still were like, no, thank you. I don't want you to know your prices. So, but not having prices on a website, like what's the reason for not doing it? Do you think you're going to like scare them off or you're too pricey? What's the reason for like hiding your prices? And do you want customers that are only shopping based on price? I don't want, I don't want clients who are just, um, basing their judgment on price because most likely if that's the case, we're probably out of their price range. Um, so by publicly displaying it though, then you weed out the people that are doing that. That's true. I, you know, I guess my, my intentions was how many people are actually going to our page for bridal and who are curious about it and how can I make that connection to turn them into a cold lead to a warm lead? Because I feel like if I can get in front of them and show more of value as opposed to people who are just always price shopping. Yeah. Um, which they can, if they go to um, our salon page, we have all of our services there. So they could technically take a look at those yeah. prices at the salon and see what the, our bridal prices are. Well, and, and it's funny because a lot of times too, when we, when we don't want something, but we think about the thing we don't want, we end up creating the thing we don't want. So if you don't want price shoppers and your opt-in is for people to look at a price list, like think of what you're doing, right? And mm -hmm. I do think even if you just made like an informational bridal packet, which had the prices on there, but it also had a lot of other details, then I think you'd attract a better quality client who's not even thinking about price. They're looking for what can you offer? What else do you do? What are your packages, your add-ons, et cetera? And then you can educate them. I think most brides want to be educated on, like I remember being a bride. I wasn't doing this. Well, I'm probably not the, well, I'm probably your avatar, but <laughs> when I was doing my bridal stuff, I, w I just wanted the best. Like I wanted the cutest, the best, whatever I could get, right? I wasn't going, who's the cheapest, who's the this, who's the that. So right. if you can educate people on like why your place is the place to go and what you can do, the brides don't care what the price is, right? Yeah. Especially these days. I was, I was pre, I was married before Instagram and all of that. So I can't even imagine what people do <laughs> these days for weddings. Um, but that's just something to think about. Okay. That's good. That's good. I definitely, you know, this whole creating that, that journey through a funnel is yeah. 
definitely new to me, but I am seeing the value of that and just trying to hone in on how can we make this work for us so we can we can uh, convert these people into um, paying clients. Yeah. This is where I want you to get creative and I'm, I'm going to just like ramble some things off, but please know I want you to kind of do this in your head is if it is a funnel, we're trying to get them to know about us. We're trying to get them to experience us. You could even do something where get them watching a video of education of like you doing, a, you know, do a nice bridal look, but then you can do, do fast forward. You can clip and edit. You can show the end result. You can make it be very short and sweet. Having like a bridal series or a video series to educate the brides, even to educate a regular person going to the salon, like how to take care of your hair in between dyes and all, you know, all of these things and what dye versus highlight. And oh my goodness, like there is so much lack of education in the hair industry. And I think a lot of times the hairstyles just expect that we know it and we don't. So if you could be educating that way, I think that's huge. That's a great idea. And I think that I could also carry that into the salon portion too, because right now um, I don't have very good funnels for the salon. Yeah, I have so this could be good. Two, but I've had only two opt-ins since I started three weeks ago. So that's really not good. But that, that's where I get frustrated with thinking maybe people just can't find us on the internet. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's not that you need them, that they're magically going to find you. You need to get in front of them to get right. noticed. I think these funnels could help you. And I mean, even having like, um, I know it's hard for people to break up with their hairstylist, but people do. I've had many hairstylists in the past 10 years, right? It happens. But if, but every time I move on, it's because I realize this person knows something or is doing something different. So how can you do a funnel showing the difference in, you know, five things your hairstylist must know or should know. And if she doesn't, these are red flags, right? When you start educating your people that way, your clients, potential clients, you're going to get people switching. Absolutely. Now, what do you think as far as like, when it comes to using a funnel with creating a Facebook ad, I have something that I would like to test out based yeah. on um, the workshop that you did last week about how to create a valuable opt-in that could convert. Yeah. Um, do you think that it's better that I test that out through our website to even see if it's... If, it's if you're getting right? enough traffic on your website, it's fine. But a lot of times it's hard to get that traffic fast enough. So somebody the other day said, how is my opt-in doing? No one opted in yet. And I said, well, how many people saw it? And she said, 30. Like 30 people seeing your opt-in is not enough for me. We need to look at the results. So putting money on Facebook or other paid platforms is just speeding up the results faster. So I think you could still test small with a Facebook ad really low budget just to see, is it working? Is it not? When you find the winners, then absolutely. And you can still test on your website, but most of us aren't getting as much website traffic as we can get on paid Facebook advertising. But I would love to see you test some of these. Numbers don't lie. Like whatever Facebook is showing and how many opt-ins and what the percentages are, whether you and I think it's a good idea, it's like what, what won, what beat out the other one. And that's the one you keep putting more money on. Yeah. And it's usually not the one you want. It's like the picture you don't like and the copy you don't like, but they like it, 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 you know? So you just want to go with the numbers. Absolutely. All right. Great. How was this, Jennifer? Do you feel like you've got some things to go back and work on and and work through? Yes, I do. I need to work on my funnels. (laughs) (laughs) But I, I, I appreciate and want to acknowledge you for even having started them and understanding the concepts because a lot of people with physical brick and mortars it's just so foreign to them. So the fact that you're already telling me your opt-ins and you have this many leads, you're that much further ahead of the game. So I want you to recognize that, all right? Absolutely. So Jennifer, if somebody was happens to be in the Naperville, Illinois area, where is your salon? What is it called? Where could they go if they wanted to check you out? Absolutely. So it's called Refine Beauty. It's located at 625 South Washington Street, real close to downtown Naperville. It's this really cute two-story house, kind of farmhouse chic inside. And you can find me at www.refinebeautyboutique.com. Perfect. Jennifer, thank you so much for jumping on here today. And thanks for being so active in the Facebook group. I'm so excited that you won this and that we were able to spend some time today. Awesome. Thank you so much, Stacey. And I have to say one thing before we leave. I created a goal setting guide for um, 2020. And at the beginning of January, 
I wrote that the classes that I would want to take is um, master class with Stacy. And so this is like, hey, I mean, one on one, talk about manifestation there. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so I, had I love it, Jennifer. Thank you so much. All right. I will see you very soon. Thank you, Stacy.